Hi, Chuck Pennell here with Pennell Custom Leather, and today we're going to see how to measure buckles and belts for needlepoint and for a new belt. Measuring for a needlepoint belt is not that terribly difficult. You just figure the width that you would like to have to go through the belt loops and have the canvas painted to that desired width. If you're going to do a rolled leather edge, like this belt, the belt is going to have about an eighth of an inch more of leather on the top and the bottom. So whatever you stitch on the belt will be just a little bit wider with the given leather. And you want to be very careful not to have your characters too tall in the top. Here you can see there's a horse jumping a jump and the rider's head is right at the very top of the canvas. So you want to take, keep in mind that when you send the belts in, any artwork that you provide, you're going to lose two to three rows on the top of the canvas and the bottom of the canvas. This is a good example of a few belts that have been uh, blocked and turned. So here you can see you have a beautiful needlepoint with initials on it and we've turned the canvas and you can see the top row is hidden under the leather. So when the belt is made, it will look something like this and your backing on the belt will cover the very first row on the top and the bottom. The second row of needlepoint is the top of the belt and then the third row of the needlepoint is essentially the first part that you see of the needlepoint and then the fourth row would be where your rider's head would be or any initials or characters. You can see here the initials have been well placed down from the top and the bottom. Also, it's critical not to have the characters too close to the end. When we do the needlepoint, we will cover at least one inch of canvas on both the buckle and billet end of the belt. So here we have the horses in perfect distance away from the leather. Some canvases, in which I really like, the artwork does roll off the edge. So here you can see this tennis racket really could have used one more row above, but the bear looks really good going around, wrapping around the entire canvas. So if you have a floral pattern like this, it looks really nice with the pattern going all the way over the top and bottom. But again, you can see you're going to lose the top and bottom row. Your needle point should be stitched six inches shorter than the desired belt. So if you take a belt that the person currently wears and measure, from where the tongue intersects with the buckle, place the tape measure right where the tongue intersects with the buckle, and then follow the, the belt down with the tape measure to the most used hole, and then subtract six inches from that. That is the length of the canvas. We need to know what the center hole is. So you give us this desired center hole, and the canvas is six inches shorter than that. If the canvas is too long, we sometimes will have to cut the canvas off. Here's Santa Claus. You can see here again, he's perfectly spaced from the end on both ends. And if it is too long, we can cut it off and make a little keychain. So it's not all that stitching has gone to waste. So we can make great little gift items with the remnants. If you're going to have a buckle similar to this, you would measure the width. If you're using your own buckle and cannot send it to us, you measure the width of the buckle by measuring the heel, and then measure the length of the buckle. And then on the back, we have the tongue. You measure from the tongue to the bar. So there you get a much longer measurement versus on a smaller buckle, you 
your size of the belt will be off. So when you measure your belt, it's critical that you measure from either the stud of the buckle to the most used hole or from the tongue strike of the buckle to the most used hole. And then you'll have a perfectly fitting belt. For information, you can give us a ring at the shop, look us up on the web, Facebook, and Instagram, PinnellCustomLeather.com. Thanks.